Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the decimals to percentages and the percentages to decimals practice questions. If you need any extra help on those, if you go to Corp Maths and go down to the videos and worksheets section and look at videos number 121 and 125, they're the dedicated video tutorials on converting between decimals and percentages. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, so question number one. Question number one says, write 0.4 as a percentage. Now here, you may know 0.4 is a percentage automatically, you know it's 40%, and it's quite useful to know that, to know that 0.1 is 10%, 0.2 is 20%, 0.3 is 30%, 0.4 is 40%, and so on. That's quite useful to know. But if you've forgotten that, here if you've got your decimal, 0.4, if you times that by 100, so if you times it by 100, that means you're moving the digits two columns to the left, so the four is gonna move into the ones, and then the tens column, so that'd be equal to 40, so that'd be 40%. So the answer is 40%, so you can just times the decimal the value, the 0.4, by 100, and that'll tell you the percentage, so 40%. Okay, next, question number two. Question number two says write 0.72 as a percentage. Again, you might just be able to look at this and spot at 72%, and that's quite useful if you can do that. But also, just if you've forgotten how to write up decimal to percentage, just take the decimal number, the 0.72. We times it by 100, so that means we're going to move the digits two columns to the left. The sevens in the temps is going to move into the ones and then into the tens. The two is going to move into the temps and then into the ones of the units. So the answer would be 72. So that's going to be 72%, and that's it. Okay, next, question number three. Question number three says to write 28% as a decimal. Again, you might just be able to spot this and be able to write down as 0.28, that is 0.28, 28% is 0.28, just knowing that that as a decimal is 0.28, and it's quite useful to know that. Alternatively, you could take the 28, you could divide that by 100, so that means we're gonna move the digits two columns to the right. So the twos in the tens column, it's gonna move into the ones, or the units column, whatever you wanna call it, and then into the temps. The eight is gonna move from the ones column, or the units column, into the temps and into the hundred. So the answer would be 0.28. So the answer is 0.28. And that's it. Okay, next, question number four. Question number four is to write 0.02 as a percentage. So again, you might be able to just look at this and spot as 2%. That's quite useful if you can get to that stage where you can just look at your decimals and just know what it is as a percentage. Alternatively, you can take the 0.02 and times it by 100. So we're going to move the digits two columns to the left. So the two is going to move into the tenths and then into the ones of the units. So that would just be 2%. Okay, next, question number five. Question number five says to write 5% as a decimal. Well, if we know that 2% is 0.02, 5 percent is gonna be 0.05, just you know, using that logic, so that's gonna be 0.05. And again, it's quite useful to know that, how to write that percentage as a decimal really quickly and easily. Also, we could just take the five and divide it by 100 to change it into a decimal. And then five divided by 100, we're gonna move this two columns to the right. So the five's in the ones or the units column, it's gonna move into the tenths and then into the hundredths. So it'd be 0.05, and that's it. Okay, next, question number six. So question number six is to write 90% as a decimal. So 90% as a decimal will be 0.9, and it's quite useful to know that off by heart. Um, some people may consider 0.90, but then we don't need this zero on the end, so it would just be 0.9, so 90% is 0.9. Another way is to again take the 90 to divide it by 100. So it means we're going to move the digits two columns to the right. So the 9, which is in the tens, will move into the ones or the units column and then into the temps. So it'll be 0.9. And that's it. Okay, next, question number seven. So question number seven says to write 49% as a decimal. So that's going to be 0.49 because 49% is 0.49. Again, we could take the 49 and divide it by 100. So it means we're going to move the digits two columns to the right. The four is in the tens. And so then it's going to move into the ones or the units column and then into the temps. So it'll be 0.49. And the nine, which is in the ones, move into the temps and then into the hundredths. So it's 0.49. Or again, it's just useful to know these and just know that 49% is 0.49. Okay, next, question number eight. Question number eight is to write 0.8 as a percentage. So 0.8 as a percentage would be 80%. And again, it's really useful to know that 0.1 is equal to 10%, the 0.2 is equal to 20%, the 0.3 is equal to 30%, and so on. And to know the 0.8 would be equal to 80%. Again, we could take the 0.8 and times by 100, and that means we're gonna move the digits two columns to the left, so the eight is gonna move into the ones of the units column, and then into the tens column, so that'll be 80, so that'll be 80%.
Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number nine. So question number nine, well, this time we've been asked to complete a table. So we've got our decimals and our percentages. And one's been given to us at so 0.15 is 15%. So one's been given to us. Okay, so here, 0.5. Well, 0.5 is a half, and that's equal to 50%. And again, it's really useful to know 0.5 is 50%. Um, just knowing that off by heart. And if 50% is 0.5, 70% would be 0.7, because then that would be, you know, 70% is 0.7. And then finally, 0.0. .0 three well that's going to be three percent and that's it we've completed the table 0.5 is 50 percent 70 percent would be 0.7 and 0.03 is three percent and again if you're not sure of any of those the decimals you can times about 100 that'll give you the percentage or if you know the percentage you can divide about 100 and then that'll give you the decimal okay let's have a look at our next question question number 10 Okay, so question number 10. Question number 10 says, over a season, a football team won 55% of their matches and they drew 32% of their matches. And then part A says, work out the percentages of the games that were lost. So we know that if they're playing a football match, they're either going to win it, they're going to draw, or they're going to lose it. So these percentages will have to add together to be 100%. This is a non-calculator question, so we need to work out 55 plus 32 to begin with. So let's work out the percentage of matches that they win or draw. So 5 plus 2 is equal to 7, and 5 plus 3 is equal to 8, so that's 87%. Then if we take that away from 100, we can work out what percentage of the matches they lose. So 100 subtract 87. So if we do that, let's borrow. So that's now going to be a 10. I'll cross that off. That's now a 9 and 10. 10 take away 7 is equal to 3. And 9 take away 8 is equal to 1. So it's going to be 13%. So what percentages of the matches did they lose? That would be 13%. And if we just check that, 55 plus 32 plus 13 is equal to 100. And yeah, that's right. Okay, part B. Part B says the right 32% is the decimal. So 32% is the decimal. You might just be able to spot it and to know it's 0.32. And it's quite useful if you can just look at that and say, well, it's 0.32 is the decimal. Or alternatively, again, we could take the 32 and divide it by 100. And that means we're going to move the digits two columns to the right. So the threes in the tens column, it's going to move into the ones or the units column, and then again into the tenths. So that'll be 0.3 and then two. So 0.32. And that's it. Okay, question number 11. So question number 11, we've got this grid and it's got one, two, three, four, five. It's got 10 squares in it all together. And then part A says, write down the percentage of the grid that is shaded. So we've got in this grid, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's 10 sections. Now you could write it as a fraction to begin with and say, well, there's seven out of the 10. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven tenths of this grid is shaded and then change that to a percentage and seven tenths is a percentage would be 70 percent and another way to think about it is it's because we've got 10 equal sections and as percentage if we take 100 and divide it by 10 that means each one is 10 percent that this square is 10 percent this square is 10 percent this square is 10 percent i'm not going to write it there because it's red ink and so on and if we just count up how many are shaded and that's 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 percent so 70 percent of that grid is shaded and that's it. As I said, also, you could write it as a fraction. So you could write seven tenths as a fraction to begin with, and seven tenths is equal to 70%. And that's it. Um, I, I probably in this question would have considered seven tenths and then thought, well, that's 70%. But again, you could say, well, each of these sections is 10% and the seven of them are shaded in. So that means that 70% of the grid is shaded. Okay, part B. Part B says, write our answer to A as a decimal number. So we need to write this as a decimal. So 70% is 0 0.7. And again, it's useful to know those off by heart. But again, if you've forgotten 70, you then divide it by 100. So it means that you're going to move the digits two columns to the right. The sevens in the tens, it's going to move into the ones of the units and again into the temps. So it'll be 0 0.7 and that's it. So it'll be 70% is equal to 0 0.7 and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, so question number 12. Question number 12 says, match each decimal and percentage. We need to match up the decimals and percentages, the equivalent ones. So here, the 25% is 0.25. And we know that a quarter is 0.25. Okay, 50%, that's a half and a half is 0.5. And then we've got, well, 20% then would be 0.2, and 0.05 then would be our 5%, and that's it. So 0.05 is 5%, 0.25 is 25%, 0.2 is 20%, and 0.5 is 50%, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 13. Okay, question number 13, we've been asked to arrange the following in order from smallest to largest. So we need to arrange these in order from smallest to largest. Now we could write them all as decimals, or we could write them as uh, percentages. I'm going to write them all as percentages. So 0.61, that's 61%. 
and 0 0.6, if we times that by 100, that's equal to 60, so that's going to be 60%. So we now know what oh, the numbers are as percentages. Now we can put them in order really quickly and easily. So the smallest one would be this one, which is 59%, 59%. Okay, next, the next smallest would be 60%, but in the question it was given to us as 0 0.6, so I'm going to write 0 0.6, I'm going to write what was given to us in the question, so we've done that one, and we've done that one, and then we've got a choice of 61% or 62%, so the next smallest would be this one, but they gave it to us as 0 0.61, so I'm going to write 0 0.61, and then the biggest one is 62%, so 62%, and that's it, so I've written those numbers in order from smallest to largest. Okay, question number 14. So question number 14, we need to put these numbers in order from smallest to largest. So again, let's write them all as percentages. So 11%, 8%. Okay, 0 0.1, that's 10%. And then 0 0.6 is 60%. So in terms of the smallest, that's going to be 8%. Then the next one would be our 10%. But in the question it was given to us as 0.1, so I'm going to write 0.1. And then our 11%. So we've done that one, we've done that one, we've done that one, and then our biggest one is 60%, or in the question that's given to us is 0 0.6, so it'll be 0 0.6. So we've written those numbers in order from smallest to largest. Okay, next, question number 15. Question number 15 says, James says that 7% is larger than 0 0.1, and we've been asked to explain why James is incorrect. Okay, so here we've got a percentage and we've got a decimal. So if we can convert both of them to either both being a percentage or both being a decimal, then that's going to make it a lot easier for us. So I'm going to change both of these numbers to percentages. 7%, that's 7%. 0 0.1, 0 0.1 is equal to 10%. So that means that James is saying that 7% is larger than 10%. Well, no, that's not correct. So let's explain that. So the question asks us to explain why James is incorrect. Well, I've said that 0.1 is 10%, so 7% is smaller than 0.1 because it's smaller than 10%, and that's it. Okay, question number 16. Question number 16 says to write 165% as a decimal. So sometimes you might be given percentages bigger than 100. And again, you'd use the same technique. You can just take the number, the 165. We can divide it by 100, and then that would change it to a decimal. So to change this number to a decimal, we're going to divide it by 100. So that means we're going to move these digits two columns to the right. So the 1 is in the 100s. It's going to move into the 10s and then into the units of the 1. So it's going to be 1. 0.65. So 165% as a decimal would be 1.65. And that makes sense because 1 is 100%. So 165% will be bigger than that. So it's going to be 1.65. Okay, next, question number 17. Question number 17 says to write 1.02 is a percentage. So again, we've got this decimal number. We want to write it as a percentage, so let's times it by 100. So 1.02 times 100, and let's see what we get. So if we times by 100, we're going to move the digits two columns to the left. The 1 is in the 1s of the units column. It's going to move into the 10s and then into the 100s. So that means that the other digits will follow, so it'll be 102. So that means it's going to be 102% as a percentage. And again, that makes sense because if 1 is 100%, 1.02 would be 102%. Okay, next, question number 18. Okay, our next one, question number 18. Question number 18 says to write 8.5% as a decimal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this 8.5 and I'm going to divide it by 100 to convert it to be in a decimal. So if we divide by 100, we're going to move the digits two columns to the right. So the 8, it's in the ones of the units column. It's going to move into the tenths and again into the hundredths. So the 8 is going to move into the hundredths. So let's put some zeros as placeholders, 0 0.08 and then 5. So let's just check that. The 8's moved from the ones of the units column into the temps and then into the hundredths and that's perfect and then the five will move from the temps into the hundredths and then into the thousandths and that's correct so 0 0.085 and again that makes sense because eight percent would be 0 0.08 so 8.5 percent would be 8.085 okay and finally we've been asked to write 0 0.215 as a percentage so let's take the decimal number 0 0.215 let's times about 100 and see what we get so we're going to move the digits two columns to the left so the two is in the tenths. It's going to move into the ones of the units and again into the tens. The one is in the hundredths column. It's going to move into the tenths and then into the units column or the ones column. And then the five, which is in the thousandths, is going to move into the hundredths and then into the tenths. So it's going to be 21.5. So our answer would be 21.5%. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to answer the practice questions on converting between decimals and percentages. I really, really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.